All right, all right. This episode I am so excited about. We're going into DNA, and you guys know I love this topic. And honestly, I feel like fate brought me to meet Dr. Anthony J at Paleo FX recently. Um, I have been geeking out on his stuff for a while now. He has a book called Estrogeneration, talking about how estrogenizing our environment is and how that's playing out in our bodies. I love that book. I so agree. And I also love his work on DNA. So let me tell you a little bit about Dr. J. Um, So Dr. J earned a a bachelor's with a double major in biology and theology, which is pretty cool, from Ave Maria University in Naples, Florida, where he researched HIV um, inhibitors. After college, he continued to work with virus in the context of Alzheimer's disease for the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Next, Dr. J earned his PhD in biochemistry from Boston University School of Medicine, researching fats, hormones, and cholesterol. So he really knows his stuff. It's so cool. And he's so humble and um, uh, open-minded in his approach. And I really appreciate that about him. Um, He's currently at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, researching stem cells, epigenetics, and infrared light. So such an honor to have Dr. J on this episode. And what he did was so wonderful. He actually um, analyzed my DNA um, that I had gotten from 23andMe. And in this episode, we're going to go over the different snips of my DNA that might be of concern. So you can kind of see how he does these. He does these consultations. Um, So I'll put all of his his links, um, on social media and the show notes so that you can get a hold of Dr. J. Um, I hope that this just opens some awareness for you. Um, and if you're going to listen to this episode, please make sure you also listen to my episode with Barton Scott about minerals, because there are some really cool, um, like cause and effect things that I found out from this episode of things that I'm predisposed to have issues with in my DNA and things that are actually manifesting in my body. And what I can do. And then it's so empowering because it's like, and here's what you can do to fix that. How amazing are we getting in this day and age with, with our health and how, how, um, uniquely we are able to optimize that for ourselves. So, um, anyway, I'm going to let, let Dr. J get started. I hope you really enjoy this episode and you learn a lot. So here is Dr. Anthony J. Hey guys, I have Dr. Anthony J on the other line. And if you've been following me on Instagram, you know, I'm very, very excited about this podcast because we are going to take a deep dive into my DNA. And I hope it is so helpful for you guys to see what kind of information you can get from doing a DNA analysis. Um, Anthony, how are you? (laughs) Good. Great to be here. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for coming. I was, I uh, got so excited when I saw you at Paleo FX. I think you noticed. <laughs> oh yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had been following your work a little bit, and I just saw you walking by, and I was like, no way! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> this is yeah, so awesome. Yeah. So I'm so glad that we crossed paths, and thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Yeah, no problem. I'm excited too. <laughs> All right. So, will you um, give everybody a little background on you and how you got started in this? Yeah, so I actually before I have a PhD in biochemistry from Boston University Med School, and before I even got my PhD, I was doing uh, I was designing viruses. I used to wow. create, design, and create viruses to knock down genes. Um, I was wow. working for the U.S. government, and I started a consulting company so they I could contract with the government. So it was for Alzheimer's research huh. um, initially, but then it kind of morphed into just you know, analyzing DNA for performance optimization. <clears throat> so that's what I do now almost exclusively, although I am giving a talk for the uh, the special operations, the spec ops in August, which is pretty exciting. Wow. Um, where, yeah. where and when? That's in Colorado at the Air Force Base. Um, oh, cool. And it's, I think it's August 1st, somewhere around the end of July or early, early August. Um, wow, awesome. Yeah, so this is all real cutting edge, and I think people need to tap yeah. into, you know, like looking at their genes and their DNA because, you know, I love epigenetics. I'm a huge fan of epigenetics, mm-hmm. and I wrote about it in my estrogen book and how these artificial estrogen chemicals alter our the marks on top of our DNA and they alter our epigenetics. Mm. But like, mm. but I still don't downplay DNA. A lot of people say, oh, it's all epigenetics, you know, and they kind of poo poo mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the DNA. They they kind of say, yeah, oh, but DNA doesn't really matter. But in reality, it's, it's still super important. They both go hand in hand. You can't overlook the, the importance of DNA either. 
Yeah, I love that. I So when I started looking into this and diving into my own and doing a couple tests and following recommendations, that's kind of what I heard. It was like, oh gosh, that's total BS, Tara. Like, don't, don't buy into that. They're just trying to sell you stuff. And I was like, I know, I kind of wonder, but I just want to try it and see, you know, what I think. And so I started following some recommendations and I noticed I started feeling better. And I also noticed some predispositions in my DNA that I saw in my mom yep. and my dad, right? So I was like, there's something here, mm. you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so then I went right. through like this little hippie phase, I guess, where I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop taking all my supplements. I'm just going to kind of, and I'm not really going to follow any specific <laughs> strategy. And I did that for a couple months. And then I got back on what I had been following with all my supplements and everything for my specific needs for genetic predispositions. And that mm-hmm. was like, whoa, I feel way better mm. when I do this stuff. So it made me a huge believer. Um, so I, oh. I agree with you um, on the, like, obviously we all understand epigenetics, but you know, when you're like, for me, for example, I was always kind of overweight and then I started living a healthier lifestyle. So I manifested the good side of my genes, right? <laughs> so oh, yeah. um, it's it does matter like what well, you know you and did, how you well, manage it, right? For sure. And you did the early version of 23andMe apparently, right? Yeah. You must uh-huh. have been on the board. You must have been on board right away, like done it. Like V1 yeah. version. Because now they have uh-huh. like, it's like five different, it's just like the fifth generation now. What's oh, interesting cool. is the early version that you did, they had they actually used to do more genes. Um, they had 900,000 huh. SNPs or somewhere in that range. Now they're wow. down to like 600,000. They've actually shrunk their service a little bit, huh. which is really irritating. When they did it, I put yeah. up a big stink about it and I called them. And all this <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? You know, it's still 600,000. It's still pretty exceptional. Yeah. But but it's, but I do like to see people like yourself that did it a long time ago because there's more information. It's even more depth. Um, yeah, cool. And yeah, when I analyze the DNA, what I do is I separate out categories just to make it kind of, you know, more packageable, more understandable. Mm-hmm more simple. So I, I do like a detox. I look for detox genes. You know, how do you, how does your body break down hormones or pesticides, herbicides, molds, you know, all the caffeine, just all kinds of different things like that. Um, and then I also look at genes relating to brain and mental health and longevity. Um, I look at diet. That's another category. So detox, brain, diet, that's three. I look at training and then I look at sleep. So basically five different categories. That's how I break it down. You could do it any number of ways, but. Yeah. Know. Yeah. I love um, that. When you, you sent it over to me and I was like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. <laughs> Cause um, <laughs> I, I thought it was very nice. Um, just so you guys listening know, he like, there's a, basically a summary, um, a very mm-hmm. user-friendly, like here's what matters and here's what you can do about it. Very applicable information right off the bat. And then access to your, um, library on your website um of right. how to to understand a little deeper on each one of those snips yeah. so yeah really yeah. cool i love the way you did that oh thanks so, yeah i appreciate that i mean the whole goal for me just like the estrogen book that i wrote i mean and everything i do in science is trying to simplify it for people for normal people because what's the point if it's super technical right. and over, you know people can't access the information who cares totally you know? totally it's not going to change anyone's life if they don't understand how to exactly. <laughs> with exactly. the information they've been given. Um, let's hit on your book really quick because that is mm-hmm. a, initially how I found you. I heard you on a podcast a couple of years ago, I think, um, mm-hmm. talking yeah. about Esther Generation. Um, yeah. Can you tell us about that book? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's about these xenoestrogen chemicals, these artificial estrogen chemicals that we're literally being exposed to every day. You know, it's not like once a week or something. It's not like Agent Orange where you're exposed once or you know, hopefully never exposed. I mean, the big problem that I see with a lot of people's health issues, chronic health issues is, I mean, certainly inflammation, but then there's also these xenoestrogens, um, these artificial estrogens and like BPA is a good example. But then when they make these BPA free bottles, they just use BPS, bisphenol S, you know, they just use these Mm. analogs that are literally just Mm. as estrogenic. I've got scientific papers, you know, that talk about how they just, (laughs) There's BPAF, there's BPS, there's BPF, there's all these different, you could just keep oh, changing wow. the structure a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, and then, in the, you know, it, it's, so it's a crazy world in terms of these estrogen chemicals because the smallest amount has an impact on us because our natural hormone levels are in the nanograms. You know, they're in the 10 to the minus ninth grams. I mean, it's a tiny, tiny amount. 
and they they have all these massive health impacts and you know so that's really what the focus on uh, of the Astro generation book is so what are the biggest hitters from that book of people what people should be aware of and avoid for these you know estrogens well usually it's the uh the stuff in the water like there's birth control in the drinking water there's atrazine herbicide um there's a lot of plastic chemicals you know like for example uh Polar bears in northern Alaska have been found to have parabens. You know, every polar bear they looked at, they looked at 11 of them, and all of them had parabens in their fat. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's clearly in the water supply. It's getting in the oceans. It's working up the food chain. It's in the polar bears in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, wow. So, so, I mean, we're being exposed to far more than that, and obviously it's loaded up in our fat cells as well. That's one of the reasons saunas are so beneficial. We sweat these things out. They call them bus studies, like blood, urine, and sweat studies, B-U-S. And if you look up okay. like bus, BUS study, BPA or bus studies with phthalates, you'll find saunas and how much you sweat these out, which is awesome to get rid of them. But yeah. most, mostly my focus is for people to avoid them. And the drinking water, you've got to filter it you right. know, with activated charcoal. And then you also want to be careful, super careful with personal care products. The personal care products, people use just generic personal care products that are cheap. They're full of these yeah. estrogen chemicals. Yeah, there's other yeah sources. I actually... there's, there's other sources. There's other sources too, of course, but those are the really, really big ones. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, when I got your report, and we'll go into my here in a second, you know, you talked about heavy metals and avoiding mm-hmm. products with alumina, aluminum and titanium dioxide and these heavy metals. Right. And I, I have switched over all of my, you know, cleaning products and my laundry and everything is natural except for my deodorant because I was uh, like, that is just one thing. Work. I'm not giving up like because i've yeah, tried so just, many natural ones well, and I, they have, don't work, I have two so. well, you came to the right place because i have also tried a ton of them i've spent so much money uh-huh. testing all these products and i don't make yeah. I, don't, I don't have any endorsements and or anything like that or any affiliation so i can totally unbiased but um uh-huh. but yeah you're absolutely right most of the natural deodorants don't work at all <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> but, but they just came out with a study. I was trying to pull it up on my folders here. They just came out with a study. I think it was this year that showed that there's quite a bit of aluminum uptake with the deodorants. It's pretty bad. Um, and of course it bioaccumulates. Yeah. So it stores up in your brain and it's neurotoxic and it stores wow. up in your body. But the, the, the key with deodorants that I found testing a million different kinds is, uh, magnesium. If you can find them with magnesium, because aluminum works really well by closing your pores and kind of, but magnesium does the same thing. Uh-huh. And so does zinc too awesome. sometimes, but okay. you know, there's one, there, there's one made by Schmitz and it's called like Schmitz fragrance free, but you have, but the Schmitz makes some that work and some that don't work. The ones that work in that company line, I found they're, they're called sensitive skin. It's like Schmitz sensitive skin. If you just buy the regular Schmitz, okay. it doesn't work at least for me. Um, everybody's a little different. Okay. But try the Schmidt sensitive skin, which has magnesium. You got to look for magnesium on the label. It's 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 like a life saver. Okay. <laughs> awesome, awesome, and it's magnesium, which is like my jam. <laughs> so, healthy, healthy. Yeah, it's down right now. It's like the sunscreen, right? Like you don't want to be putting yeah. these crappy chemicals on your body with sunscreen, but you can use zinc sunscreen, and it right. actually works, and it's healthy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a, like major bonus. Okay, cool, awesome. Thank you. All right, should we dig in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also. <laughs> So what what I want to do, I mean, obviously I sent you the detox report and you can see that pretty easily and go through okay. that. Um, but what I want to do, I think, is start with the Excel sheet because, okay. you know, what I do is I give people and I do this for people, right? I do consulting for everyday people. I do pro athletes. I do people from all backgrounds. It's pretty fun um, because it helps people and it, you yeah. know, it, it, it optimizes people and, you know, you, you can really customize a lot of aspects, whatever your goals are. <clears throat> and when I do the DNA consulting, as as with you, I, I give people a detox report. And then I also give people an Excel sheet, which has a lot of other genes. Mm-hmm. And the Excel sheet, it has what's called RS codes, right? Like RS, and then there'll be a mm-hmm. bunch of numbers and a couple letters. RS codes, that just means reference SNP. Um, so it's just a way that scientists use to to basically search these things. If you want to go to Google and you punch in these RS codes, you'll find the gene, right? Because like it helps you like on your end, if you want to take notes or something, you don't have to spell out all these gene names. Like how do you spell methylene tetrahydrofolate methyltransferase reductase? (laughs) 
right? Like right. that's a literal name of a gene, methylene tetrahydrofolate polymethyl transferase reductase. That's an actual gene. Good job. So like, <laughs> yeah, obviously, we don't want to be spelling these things. Yeah, it gets kind of absurd the way scientists name these things. Um, <laughs> so it's better to have RS codes. And some of them say GS, right? Like number one on your Excel sheet. Mm -hmm. It'll say GS141. Well, the GS, that means a group of SNPs. And so sometimes scientists validate these genes with a number of SNPs, not just one. Just a okay. further way of validating. It's just a technical thing. But what's cool. what the other, the only other thing in terms of background on the Excel sheet is the letters, right? You'll notice there's letters. And obviously, your listeners can't see letters, but they're either A, T, G, or C. And that's because DNA code is made of A, T, G, or C. It's code. Like, just like computer code is all zeros and ones, mm -hmm. um, DNA, DNA code is A, T, G, and C. That's the letter. So okay. the important thing and all that really matters for you is that if you see two of the same letters, whether it's A, A, T, T, G, G, mm -hmm. or C, C, that means plus, plus. That means you've got a okay. bad version from both parents um, or oh, yeah. a unique version, right? It's not always bad. Like if you've got fast twitch muscle fiber type and it's plus plus, you know, that's unique, but it's not bad, right? Or if you're fast, right. if, you're in, if you're plus plus for endurance, like you have a unique ability to like, you know, for your muscles to be, to endure, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. then that's also plus plus, but that's not bad, you know, with right. detox, it's right. bad in, in general. If you can't break down a pesticide or a mold or a herbicide, I consider that a bad thing, right? So that mm -hmm. a plus plus, meaning you got a bad version of a gene from both of your parents, that's bad. And by the way, just as another in another uh, in, in terms of more background, I guess, you know, we all have two copies of DNA in every cell in our body. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, you know, except egg and sperm cells, egg and sperm cells only have one copy of DNA. So obviously when the egg unites with a sperm and you end up with a fetus and all this, and the, um, then you end up with two copies again. And that's where you get the whole, like one copy from your mother and one copy of DNA from your father. Does that make sense? It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's so yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, the, so we actually have redundancy. So sometimes when you have a plus minus, meaning you got a bad version of a gene from one parent, and a good version from the other parent, uh, sometimes the cell can actually detect, in a lot of cases, the cell can actually detect the bad version and just use the good version. That's one of the reasons you mm. have two copies. It's redundancy. It's like a, it's almost like an engineering redundancy. Um, so something goes bad, you got the good version there. Um, it's not always true, but obviously if you got a plus plus, like a two bad versions, well, then you've got an issue. Um, so... You know, if you don't mind, we'll just start with number one on the list and just kind of go down and I'll just talk about it. So we'll, we'll start with the category. I call it the brain category, mental longevity category of genes that I was looking mm -hmm. at in terms of your genes. And they're all really exceptional, of course. <laughs> I probably, probably wouldn't tell, <laughs> I, you know, um, you, you know, you're your coach, you're a leader in the, in the health space, you're a podcaster. Um, the one risk that you really had that was you know, that you probably know already, but it's, it, it was the Alzheimer's risk. You know, it's not a super high risk uh -huh. because you're a plus minus. You've got the APOE3 slash four. Okay. It's kind of like a plus minus. Mm -hmm. um, if okay. you have the APOE4 slash four, that's like a, literally a 70% chance of getting Alzheimer's if you don't change oh, your diet wow. and lifestyle. But oh, this wow. one is like, it's like a twofold increased risk of Alzheimer's. So it definitely runs in your family. But, okay. but the good news is, uh -huh krill oil or DHA, like triglyceride DHA or mm -hmm. phospholipid DHA, just it should totally eliminate your, your risk. So super, super awesome. important I for you to do DHA. Right we started. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that one's really important to know. Wow. I mean, just like just for that one gene, I think people should do their 23andMe or their ancestry. Ancestry also Seriously? gives you it, yeah. They both, you know. Ancestry and 23andMe, just so people know, are both exceptional. They're both really good, and they both will give you this information. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, people... And it's so empowering to be like, huh? just take krill oil, don't get Alzheimer's. I mean, that's exactly. such empowering information. Right. <laughs> no, and Rhonda Patrick has videos on this. She has this exact same thing, the 3 slash 4, I think. And so if people want to really mm -hmm. go down a rabbit hole, they yeah. can get, dig hey, into I love that. Her. But yeah. Um, Sweet. And that, so, and then the other one, I always check for how your brain deals with sugar, right? 
And you do pretty good mm-hmm. with carbs in terms of your brain function. That's not to say you're below your body. You know, you're everywhere else on your body um, can be different, but just specific to your brain, um, your brain does pretty well with carbs. That's number two. It's a, it's a gene called Fox O3, FOXO3. Um, I always look at that to mm-hmm. see um, you're plus minus, so you're not like exceptionally great dealing with carbs, but you're not bad, you know? It's a life, okay. it's a longevity gene. It's related, like the version you have is related to more longevity, increased lifespan, because your brain does awesome. better with carbs. Um, so you don't get as much of the brain fog and all that stuff when you eat a lot of carbs. Some people, mm-hmm. it's just terrible, right, for their brain. Like that's one of the wow. reasons uh, type 2 diabetes, right, they have people that have high blood sugar all the time and diabetes, they get, they have a threefold increased risk of uh, Alzheimer's. You know, having a high blood sugar, having yeah. lots of carbs in your brain can be really detrimental, can be bad for your brain. But again, you, you do pretty well with that. Right. I check heavy metal genes okay. as well. You know, how does your brain deal with heavy metals? You're good on that front. I don't list any here because you have good ones. Those can also increase risk for Alzheimer's. So there's a number of categories I check for Alzheimer's. And I'm not going to talk about every gene imaginable because there's thousands of them. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, but those are the big ones for Alzheimer's. So you're really good except the DHA. So, so prioritize DHA. Um, number three, so that's one, two. So number three is a plus plus for handling stress well. So you have a good version of the oxytocin receptor. Um, so you don't have to like hmm. bend over backwards to, you know, to enhance oxytocin. You just all naturally deal with stress pretty well, in, at least in terms of your brain. Now, some people mess that up with their lifestyle and they have parents that were yelling at them and they kind of learn bad habits or whatever, right? I'm not saying you did, uh-huh. <laughs> but but some people, you know, they just develop yeah, poor, I have no bad habits. poor habits. No, no, yeah, no, yours are, yours are probably yeah. good, but at least. I've noticed that, that I can handle stress pretty well. I've noticed yeah, that. I'm not surprised. And that's really common. Um, and that's one of the funny things about doing DNA consulting is, people they come to me and initially they're a little hesitant but then as i tell them their genetics mm-hmm. they start to realize like oh this guy knows what we're like talking like about reading. because like i can actually trust this information because <laughs> right. you know you start to realize like yeah he knows a lot more about me than i than i thought you know just from looking at the yeah, dna I love it. so it's it's a powerful powerful yeah. tool yeah um, number four you have plus plus for longer telomeres which is again longevity so you have great longevity gene, um, longer telomere. So, so on your shoelaces, you've probably seen those little plastic caps on the ends sometimes. You know, telomere DNA has something similar. It has these telomeres on the ends. So DNA physically shrinks as we get older. Um, so you can literally in a right. lab, in a research lab, you can tell the difference between an 80 or 80 year old person and a three year old person just looking at the length of their DNA. It's easy. Um, but for you personally, you've just got longer DNA than your age, than your actual age, which is good. Well, you know what's interesting about that is I did actually did the Tello years um, test. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it came back uh, that I my telomere age or whatever was fifty eight. It was a little depressing. Uh, I was like, "What's going yeah, on?" Yeah. So I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can. I mean. You were trained pretty hard, right? Yeah, and it could have been I had just like trained for and ran the Boston Marathon, and I had just gone through a yeah. lot of like life change and psychological stress. So I don't know. Um, well, that's, there's but, a yeah, couple it, things. I mean, and you may have been deficient in zinc. Usually, if you're like for you, probably. zinc is a really important mineral, um, and we'll get to that in the diet section. But <laughs> yeah. um, you had a few genes that really required zinc, and this is one of them that you know if you're mm. low on zinc, your telomeres will just your hmm. dna will just sh- shrivel right up but yeah oh, boston wow. marathon i mean just looking at you i can tell you're in super good shape and you probably have had times where you train really yeah, intensely really. and sure. and that can be tough on your body you know you can bounce yeah. back from that but it can right. be it can take a little bit um but at least yeah. genetically you're stacked so even if you if you had bad genetics you would have been 80 years old <laughs> Yeah. Or something. Yeah. That or, so much sense. And this was before I got into, so, I mean, I definitely supplement zinc and a lot of things now because of DNA testing, but mm-hmm. this was before that. So yeah. Makes well, a lot the sense. other thing is too, and, and again, I'm not going to go through the detox genes too much because I gave you like a nice little written out summary, but mm-hmm. you're super sensitive to heavy metals compared to most people. Mm-hmm. And those can mess up your telomeres and like glutathione is really important for you. 
um, you know, probably even as a supplement or just things that increase glutathione. <clears throat> Some people do IV infusions of glutathione, but that would also benefit you. Okay. Okay. I just did an IV yeah. glutathione yesterday. <laughs> so yesterday? I was like, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. And That's I do awesome. use like, oh. glutathione. And yes, I. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and like I say, if specific to you, that would be really beneficial because awesome. those, if you've got um, the aluminum building up in your body or something, I mean, that's definitely going to me mess up your telomeres, you know. Um, and yeah, I just had somebody yesterday send me their heavy metal. I recommend hair heavy metal panels oftentimes, like the Great Plains Lab has one for like 150 bucks. And people with these heavy metal risk chains, you know, it's usually good to check your hair, not your blood. Sometimes people send me blood work and then they do heavy uh -huh. metals in the blood. And it's like, that just basically tells you what you ate that day. You know? Yeah, the yeah hair, you're the second expert to tell me that recently. Yeah, <laughs> and well, in the hair, it's like, a, it tells you what a long-term snapshot, what's been building up in your body. And somebody sent me one yesterday, um, just kind of as a follow-up to a consult that I had done with him. And mm -hmm. let me just see if I can pull it up. Sorry. It's probably worth it if I can find it within two seconds. Um, While you're looking it up, yeah. um, I'm going to have another um, expert come on. Um, his name is Barton Scott. He does um, like nano size minerals. Mm -hmm. So the absorption is higher. He's also a biochemist. And um, he has sent me his hair test. So we're going to analyze the mineral content um, for my hair. So that's something I'll be doing soon too. Yeah. Perfect. Good for you. Yeah. So I got it here. So he had... Uh, and he was in ninety fifth percentile for aluminum in his, so way oh, overdosing wow. aluminum. Oh wow! He had really high ant antimony, also above ninety fifth percentile in antimony, and then he also had, I mean, some of the other ones were borderline, but the other one was thallium, huh. right? So it's like stuff you wouldn't just yeah you wouldn't think like oh I want, <laughs> like I should yeah. check the foods for thallium. It's, right. it's not intuitive, you know, you have to get it checked if you're at a right. risk for heavy metals to really know what, what it might be, especially if your telomeres are short, which could indicate there's something, obviously, well, it does indicate something's not quite optimal, right? Yeah. Do um, you have a resource for people, if they do have high heavy metals, what to do about it? Where to go from there? Well, not, I don't have a great resource, but okay. I mean, I just tell people, look, if you've got thallium, Google it, you know, and figure out which yeah. foods are high in thallium or what sources yeah. of thallium or right. whatever, because there's so many heavy yeah, metals. Of course. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm really not the guy to talk to about okay. which specific one, but I mean, there's cobalt and chromium and vandate. There's all these weird ones, you know, <laughs> uh -huh. but yeah, you definitely, if you get, if you come back high, you definitely want to dig into it and find out what to do yeah. about the specific one. <laughs> Um, okay. And then, but at least your telomeres are good in terms of your genetics. And then similar with sirtuin, right? You've heard of resveratrol and supplementing resveratrol is a big thing right now. Uh huh. Um, a lot of a lot of people are doing it as like an anti aging thing. But you have a good version of the sirtuin gene. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason people take resveratrol is to activate their sirtuin gene to kind of upgrade mm -hmm. it because um, that's associated with longevity in most animal studies and things. Mm -hmm. But again, yours is good. So resveratrol is kind of, is probably just a waste of money for you. Sweet. I don't know. <laughs> I won't buy another yeah. bottle. <laughs> yeah, because it is expensive. Um, and some mm -hmm. people, you know, some people, they really have a crappy version of sirtuin and then they get massive benefits. Although I prefer to use other ways to, I prefer grape seed proanthocyanins to activate sirtuin uh -huh. over resveratrol because resveratrol okay. can act like estrogen. Oh, um, okay. Oh, so, so in some situations, you don't want a lot of estrogen, you know, you, you can throw off your body's natural hormones. So there's, there's okay. a little bit of context there, but, but again, for yeah. you, no need to worry about that. <laughs> but I mean, that's it. I mean, in terms of your mental genes and your longevity genes, they're really exceptional, you know, awesome. no schizophrenia awesome. stuff, no like weird ones that jumped out at me, you know, and obviously uh, on the air, I might not say those ones anyways. I might tell you off the air, <laughs> but, but they weren't there. Yeah. They weren't there. So I don't have to do that. You know? Okay. Awesome. That's really good to know. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so would you like to go into any of the other like major, um, like what are the most common genes that you see? Is there like a repetitive one where you're like, man, everybody's got this or no. In terms of the brain or just all the categories? Or yeah, any category like that you see repeated a lot. That's a very common um, um, snit that people have issues with or no. 
Well, the MTHFR, of course, is probably the and one of the big ones that a lot of people like to talk about, and it's really common. It's, it's shockingly common, and it causes massive problems. But a lot of people talk about that, so it gets plenty of press. Mm -hmm. No, but one that one that you don't hear a lot about, but I see it in probably ten percent of people. But it has a massive effect is the CYP1B1 gene issue, and I, I don't think you had that issue. I'm gonna just double check you, Jesus. Yeah, you didn't have that one. You had a plus minus on it, but people with plus plus on that, especially men, they they just over and over. I was doing Jay Campbell's DNA on the air on his podcast, right? So it's not confidential, um, just mm -hmm. like we're doing yours here. But he he had the CYP1B1 plus plus, like a bad version of that gene, and that's the one that breaks down xenoestrogens, artificial estrogens, which you know mm -hmm. relates to my book. And I was like, man, so many people with this gene, they get gynecomastia and they have all the like man boobs, right? Breast tissue development in mm -hmm. males. You get all these estrogen symptoms. He's like, funny you should say that because I've had surgery mm -hmm. for gynecomastia. And it's so common, you know, to have oh, that. Wow. And, and for women, they have other similar types of issues with fertility and all this other depression, you know. So that one is, mm -hmm. like say, it's not super, super common, but it's common enough. And it's, it's usually a really frustrating one for people because they can't quite figure it out. And then, then I find that gene. It's like, oh, this makes sense. Now, you, now we see what's going on. And the sauna can really help those people. And again, understanding what the artificial estrogens are and how to avoid them and being more strict about it than the average person is really key for those people. Yeah, that's this is why I love this stuff because it's to me, it is very cutting edge in health and nutrition because instead of saying like, hey, like, she takes this and it's awesome for her. So I'm going to take that right, <laughs> or right, she exactly. does this diet nutrition and it works for Just her. Guessing. So I'm going to do that. You know? Yeah. yeah. We're, we don't have to guess. We can get finely, highly tuned, specialized information just for us right. to optimize our health. Well, it's and, amazing. And, the, and like, yeah, well, a lot of, I was going to say a lot of people are doing the carnivore diet right now. Um, there's mm -hmm. a gene, I think it's called CDKN or CDKN2A and CDKN2B. It's related to uh, heart attack risk and plaques in your arteries. And mm -hmm. one of the things that really eliminates that risk is flavonoids, like from plants. In fact, the FDA mm -hmm. even approved a drug called flavopyrinol that protects your arteries in those cases. But it's just a flavonoid mimetic. It's just an, a molecule that imitates flavonoids. You can literally just take flavonoids instead of taking this drug, and it pretty much has the same effect. I'm sure if they did the same clinical trials, it would have the same effect, but they don't want to admit it because they probably sunk a billion dollars into the drug. <clears throat> but like if you come back with that that issue, the CDK and the N2A issue, right? Like it is really, really important that you get flavonoids to protect your arteries because your body really needs them to for that specific lever or switch. You know, you want to pull that lever. And again, like there's a million different flavonoids. I think there's 5,000, there's more than 5,000 of them, but they're plants, you know? I mean, you can certainly just supplement yeah. one of them, but or you can just get plants that are rich in flavonoids. That's a f not a super common gene issue, but it's certainly common in people that I consult with that have tried carnivore and have horrible success with it, which does happen. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's all these categories. There's like thyroid gene issues. Uh, um, that I look at, you know, 11 and 12 in your case, you have definitely a higher risk of some thyroid issues. So taking iodine is super important. Um, awesome. And, you know. I do like my multivitamin. Do you think that's sufficient iodine or for someone like me? How, needs how much more? is it? Do you know how much is it? It is off the top of your head or, or like as long as it's like 250 micrograms. I don't think people need to overdose iodine like crazy. A lot of people take way too much and I, I don't. You know, that's getting a little bit, but you definitely need it, you know, and getting it from salt or something isn't, isn't really the optimal way. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, for you, yeah, it's speaking interesting. Of salt. Well, I was going to say quick, because yeah. it's interesting that you've got the, you've got the need for DHA, right? For your, to protect your brain against Alzheimer's. You've got the need for iodine more than most people for your thyroid. And then you're just going to talk about your need for salt. So it's probably you probably had some mm -hmm. ancestors that had like way way back that like lived on the ocean, you know, just speculating. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, most of my ancestry is from um, like Norwegian areas, um, Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, England. So yeah, quite possibly. Um, 
So speaking of salt, I thought this was so interesting um, on the calm tea variant that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, it right. says that I need to eat more salt and drink more water than normal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you explain that a little bit? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, um, so you had a, so on the COMT gene, there's a position on the gene called V158M. So normally you'd have a valine there on one of the 20 amino acids, but it said you have a methionine there another one of the 20 amino acids. So at position 158, you've got an issue and it's plus plus. And also at position 62, you had a plus plus issue on that same gene. You were missing a histidine there, H62H. So you have a position, you have two spots on that same gene that are problematic, plus plus. One of them causes a 40% reduction in COMT activity, the other one. So anyways, the point is, you don't break down catecholamines very well. That's what catechol-O-methyltransferase, that's what COMT does. Mm -hmm. um, so you have more catecholamines in your body. One of the things catecholamines do is they signal to your kidneys to excrete water and salt. So basically, you're not breaking them down, so you're signaling to your kidneys, hey, excrete water and excrete salt a lot more than I, I, normal. Mm -hmm. And so water and salt for you are really important just for optimizing your health and longevity and muscle function, things like that, more so like than the average person, you know? Yeah, that's so interesting. I, I saw this pop up, and I just kind of laughed. Um and I also saw that you recommend Redmond Real Salt, which is just so funny because I know them quite well and um, have toured their mind. And I, I love that company and I love their products. Um, and I loved it long before I ever met them. Um, but yeah. I noticed when I did keto. So my background basically is I did keto for a little over a year, pretty strict. Mm -hmm. um, I actually trained and ran the Boston Marathon in ketosis. Um, awesome. And then now I probably watched my, you. I used to live there. I, I used to live right by Heartbreak Hill. Oh, really? I, I took kids down. Yeah, I have four kids. I used to take kids down. We would just sit and watch everybody go by every oh. every year. Oh, I have four <laughs> kids too. Yeah, I, I was oh. blown away. Um, the, the experience was actually quite hard for me. And I actually think that the salt mm -hmm. and water thing may have been mm -hmm. an issue for me. Um, getting dehydrated right. was a little hot that year. And it was physically, it was by far the hardest thing I've ever done, including harder than natural childbirth with my biggest baby. <laughs> but wow. um, from, from a in uh, experience point of view, that was w one of the richest life experiences I've ever had. And it was mm. truly because that whole entire city, they didn't just show up and watch. I mean, it was like raving diehard fans <laughs> cheering for you yeah. for like 26 miles. It was the most like heartwarming thing I've ever seen. You know, it was just so yeah. beautiful. You almost so, have to wear your Yeah. Spectators are yeah, so loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. It was, it was just so such a beautiful experience. Um, but I did, um, I really, really, really struggled with hydration, um, right. on keto. Well, and, especially and you're one of those people running. I would say, to, yeah, hundred percent. And you're one of those people I would suggest to take, uh, like an electrolyte pill, like straight up when you're doing that kind of thing, because uh -huh. otherwise you get behind the eight ball and it's hard to catch up. Some people can pull it off. You know, like I think the whole drink water all the time, even if you're not thirsty, I think that's way overdone and exaggerated in our culture, in the health circles. <laughs> But for you, it's not, you know, for you, it's different. Okay. And okay. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty common gene issue. You know, it's not super rare. A lot of Caucasians have this gene. Similar with vitamin D, right? A lot of Caucasians have the vitamin D issues, vitamin D receptor issues. So they need more vitamin D. Um, yeah. I asked before about common genes that I see all the time. That's definitely another one. <clears throat> and that's tricky because, I mean, yeah. you, at least with that one, the doctors oftentimes will check it just on a standard blood test. So people get a sense of what their vitamin D is and you can just optimize it from that direction instead of understanding your genetics. Uh -huh. um, but I like yeah, to see- Yeah, but you might as well do all this. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that and you learn other things too. But I mean, with vitamin D, you know, it's amazing how many people come in and they're like around 30 nanograms per mil of vitamin D, like 30. And it's, mm -hmm. it's too bad because that's pretty much the average American. Um, but they've done studies on these tribes that live around the equator and on these hunter gathering tribes. And there are a hundred, 100 nanograms per mil is the average person in the tribe, you know, and they don't, obviously they don't supplement yeah. anything. So we're talking 30 compared to a hundred. And if you come in with a 30, they'll tell you you're normal, you know, at the doctor's office, but it's like normal yeah. compared to what average obese unhealthy right. Americans that work in cubicles. <clears throat> and I like, I definitely right, like, yeah. I, I like to see people above 50 nanograms per mil. And for somebody like you with, with the gene issue on your vitamin D receptor, it takes more vitamin. You have to supplement quite a lot to get up to 50. You know, you have to take at least 5,000 
um, I use mm -hmm. a day unless you're out in the sun, but you know, you really have to take quite a bit more um, just to get that number. Okay. Yeah. I noticed. Um, so I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, mm -hmm. so we have really cold winters, obviously oh, not getting right. a lot of sunlight. Yeah, you know, in Drew, uh, Drew. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah super man. good friend of mine. Yeah. Right. That's right. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, I noticed, um, it's funny. I always was like a kind of a, a closet about this. I didn't want to tell anybody, but I would tan every once in a while, um, and tanning beds because I just noticed such a huge, mm. significant nice. improvement in my mood, nice. in my energy levels. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, I would, I use the tanning beds. They have, they mimic natural sunlight. Um, oh, yeah. but I, I do that occasionally and it makes a massive difference, like on my life, oh, yeah. <laughs> to right. be honest. Right. Uh, and I, I do supplement vitamin uh, D3 with K2 also, mm -hmm. but I notice such a stronger effect yeah. when I actually get it from the sun. Um, is that something you've oh, yeah. noticed too? For sure. And, and that's kind of what yeah. I say in that paragraph I wrote, I sent to you. It's like ideally take a week or two in the winter, especially if you're in the northern climate, and just yeah. go to Florida. You can't beat the sunshine. You know, you just can't because there's other things going on. A lot of times scientists, I, even like myself, we like to pretend like we know everything. And we really don't, you know, like, there's so much going on that we don't know yeah. when you get the sunshine and people, all they think is vitamin D is changing, but in reality, there's probably a thousand things that are being improved. You know, you like, you do these, yeah, you, you totally. do these, have you heard of proteomics? You know, what proteomics is it's, it's like, no, basically uh -uh. it's measure, it's checking for protein differences, right? So you can take your blood and then you can do an intense workout and take your blood again and run it through a mass spec and look at all the proteins and which ones change and there's literally thousands of them you know like the different fragments like peptides and little pieces of protein and there's like thousands of changes and what they do is they pick like the top top five or something you know and then they study those because those are the most changed but in reality there's thousands that change right and they're only looking at a few in, in most of these studies that we do yeah and that's pretty generally true of most studies so there's a lot going on with the sunshine that we don't understand but it's nothing beats the sunshine yeah awesome i know i read that take a visit to southern florida in the dead of winter i was like doctor's orders <laughs> done well, you, you try, yeah. i yeah, have right. to <laughs> yeah. um and then yeah going down just a little bit i wanted to talk about um this one about vitamin c mm. being more important for me um because i have noticed that so much mm. and it's honestly i think that alone is almost one of the main reasons um i really prefer to not be in ketosis all the time yeah. anymore yeah. um my when i eat vitamin c rich foods i just feel absolutely amazing um, when I supplement vitamin C, I notice things like my nails grow stronger um, and my mood is better and I, I definitely don't get sick as much. So could you speak on that and with genetics? Yeah. Yeah. And that's not a super common gene. Most people okay. seem to have like plus plus minuses on this gene to come up with a plus plus is not super common, but it is definitely impactful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and basically it's it's a gene that's involved in carcinogens, getting rid of carcinogens for one. Um, it kind of puts a little flag on it. It's an acetyl transferase, meaning it, this gene transfers an acetyl group. It's like, a, like I say, it puts a little flag on a carcinogen, tells your body, hey, get rid of this thing. And vitamin C really helps your body do that if you've got a dysfunction in this gene. Um, and of course, vitamin C is also involved in making collagen. That's the, you know, yeah. the big one for your nails and all this other stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty much that simple. You know, like you can take quite a lot of vitamin C. And it's really, it's really critical for somebody like you. Now, antioxidants in general, I don't recommend people take all the time because that can actually increase your cancer risk. <clears throat> really? Oh, oh, yeah. And that's because, um, you know, sometimes you get these little can these cancer cells. Well, well, let me go back in history for, for, for a second. In the 90s, they discovered this and because they tested vitamin E on uh smokers and they assumed there was going to be less cancer in people that took vitamin e right antioxidant but in reality they uh -huh. had more cancer they had like a 20 percent increase in cancer in the vitamin e category uh -huh. and since then they've and this was published in new england journal of medicine but they said we got this massive increase in cancer but we don't know with antioxidants but we don't understand why and they did some other antioxidant studies also and they had the same results 
but vitamin C is unique because your body breaks it down into hydrogen peroxide, um, mm -hmm. which kills cancer cells. And the problem with most antioxidants is they actually protect the cancer cells. So they allow the cancer cells to live longer. This is kind of what they've discovered in more recent times. Um, so you're actually encouraging cancer cells to live longer than they should instead of allowing your body to kill them and clear them out. Um, but again, vitamin C is an outlier. It's a unique one because it protects you. It's important, especially for you, but it also kills cancer cells because it breaks down to hydrogen peroxide, which kills cancer cells. Wow. Okay. So vitamin C for everyone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Vitamin C. Yeah. Well, I mean, but it's, like I say, especially if you got yeah. this gene, you know? Yeah. That's so, that's so, it's so helpful. So this is the stuff that just makes me like want to spread this message because like that's such empowering information to know about yourself. Yeah. So cool. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, then the other one that's interesting, it's interesting. You know, I know, you know, Robert Sykes yeah, or at yeah, least, you know, of Robert Sykes that. and Danny uh -huh. Vega and <laughs> yeah, you heard my podcast with them where I talked about their DNA. And it was funny because those guys, of course, Robert uh, Sykes and Danny Vega are both hardcore uh, keto guys. They're really, you know, massive bodybuilder types with that are pretty strict keto most of the time, you know, almost all the time. And they had this gene issue with uh, higher blood uh -huh. sugar. So eating, you know, if they eat like the same amount of carbs as a normal person, their blood sugar actually goes uh -huh. higher. And it's funny because you have the same gene, you know, that's G6P gene. <laughs> yeah, it's number eight on the list I sent you. But um, so those people, people like yourself usually do respond better to keto now. But again, your brain, it's less important than some of those people, right? Like you've got your brain does have the ability to handle cars pretty uh -huh. well. But it is interesting that you do have that keto gene. Oh, that's so interesting because some of the other genetic tests that I've done have told me that I'm like a super metabolizer of carbohydrates. Um, so I don't know if there's like some other gene that they were looking at there. Um, but I, so for me personally, yeah, well, yeah. I actually, no, I actually gained a lot of body fat on keto and like, no matter what I did, I couldn't lose it. So it was, it was super interesting. And then as soon as I brought some carbs back in, it just like dropped right off. Um, so. Yeah, but yeah. I, I definitely, that's why I advocate no, I mean, keto because I do, um, like, I feel optimal being low carb. And when I, you know, I'm talking mm -hmm. low carb, I'm talking all the vegetables I want and like <laughs> some fruit here and there and like maybe yeah. some potato or sweet potato once in a while. So it's, you know, they're, these are all low glycemic, uh, pretty low glycemic. Or, well, and, and, <laughs> yeah, and you didn't have any like diabetes risk genes. You know, you really didn't. Most people have a lot of them. Some people have five or six, and sure enough, they got diabetes. Uh -huh. You know, okay. yeah. Um, so that that really ha helps. That stacks the odds in terms of your in, in your favor. Just this one that jumped out because it is interesting. Um, but what I like to do, what I'd probably recommend, is basically doing intermittent fasting, of course, uh -huh. because I think that's good for everybody, like skipping breakfast or something. Mm -hmm. And then for lunch, kind of basically go keto or just no carbs. And then for dinner, just have whatever, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Awesome. Have, have carbs, have, have everything, something like that. But of course it depends on your training and I know you're pretty intense with your training and stuff. So I'm sure you've got it figured yeah. out better than I can figure it no, out. Because you're really, really, you're really I like really check in with my body. And if I don't feel like I need carbs, I don't eat them. <laughs> so it's like some days I'm mm -hmm. pretty keto. And, but then every once in a while, I feel like the need to throw some fruit in and I just kind of honor that, you know, so that's kind of how I roll. But I right. like the, um, you know, just one of my meals a day will have carbs and the rest of it's just healthy fats and vegetables and protein. And that keeps me exactly. I think that's, I think that's really smart for sure. And how is your gut lining? Like, how is your gut health? Do you ever have like issues with grains and that sort of thing? I don't, my gut, I'm so grateful. Like I Good. almost never notice anything. <laughs> so gut health is. Do you eat, do you eat grains? Do you eat like bread and stuff? Well, no, <laughs> I don't. I mean, very, oh, okay. very, <laughs> you know, like if I'm every once in a while in a yeah. dining situation with people or something, I might, but yeah, extremely rare for me to eat grains I, sometimes i'll have like quinoa yeah. like that um very rarely though mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sure yeah because you definitely had a risk for leaky like a leakier yeah. gut not just 13 and 14 on the list the gene is called atg16l1 huh. oftentimes if you eat a lot of whole grains and a lot of like 
a lot of that kind of stuff that people oftentimes recommend, you actually end up with leaky gut and a lot of inflammation. Oh, wow. Um, Good to know. But there's a peptide called B. Yeah, there's a peptide called BPC-157 that just like works wonders for people that have that issue. But the optimal way to do it is just avoid grains to begin with. <laughs> oh, you know, so I actually I mean, which pretty, pretty much you're doing. I actually use BPC-157 um, like I was injecting it when I had an injury um, mm -hmm. from running. So are you saying that you yeah. can take it orally for gut health? You can both, right? You can do injections or oral. PPC-157 is made in your stomach. Okay. It's actually a natural peptide. I mean, one of the beauties of taking peptides is your body makes peptides. So it's not like a drug where your body is like, what the hell is this? Right. You know, it's a natural thing. And BPC-157 is a natural, of course, but it's also made in your stomach. So it can withstand stomach acid, which almost, I mean, there's virtually no other peptides that can withstand stomach acid. So yeah, you can inject it, which is a little cheaper because you need like half the dose if you inject it. So uh -huh. instead of taking 200 milli, you know, micrograms or whatever, you take 100 micrograms, or you can just squirt it into your mouth or just take a pill. You know. Okay, awesome. That's really good to know for for leaky gut. That's amazing. Yeah, it's super. I mean, that's really the. It's called body protective factor, the the, the BPC or body protective complement or something, but. I mean, it's the most powerful attribute of BPC one fifty seven is gut. Uh, regeneration, gut healing. Oh, awesome. I mean, there's so mm -hmm. many problems with that. So that's a really powerful piece of information. Yeah. There. Awesome. Right. Okay. But again, well, again, and do what you're doing, right? Like you're already avoiding grains mm -hmm. and that's the key. You know, like you're not eating a ton of bread and stuff like that. So you're, you're not have you probably don't have leaky gut to begin with. And that's a lot better. That's a better place to start from. <laughs> right. It seems like everything you're saying is like, uh, this information is so helpful to know what to avoid so that you don't even have mm -hmm. the problem begin with and then you don't have to fix it exactly. on the table. Yeah, it's awesome. Yep. Well thank you so so much for this. I know people are gonna geek out and they're all gonna want their DNA analyzed and I know that you're you're pretty busy. I think there's a pretty high demand, yes. Uh, but where can they find you yeah, if they want yeah. more? Yeah, I mean AJ Consulting Company dot com is my website. It's a terrible URL. It's a terrible website name. AJ Consulting Company. You have to put the, all those words in there. Um, Memorable. But like I said, back back when I started the company with the government, they just wanted me to throw something down on paper. And so oh, I was like, wow. oh, okay, whatever. AJ Consulting Company is before I was a doctor and everything. Um, but, <laughs> so that's what it is. AJ Consulting Company dot com. I have like a one month waiting list, which sometimes okay. it oscillates up to two months, and it, sometimes I have sales because you know. You know, more or less people depends, you know, the price depends on the demand sometimes, but it's not okay. too bad. You know, it's, it's pretty reasonable. It's $300 what I charge uh -huh. um, when I have the sales and stuff. So it's, you know, it's, I think it's reasonable for everybody. It's funny because I make pro athletes pay the same as everybody else. You know, I don't yeah. really, I'm not really doing it for money because I really do want to see people get healthy with their genetics. Oh, absolutely. It's so, it's so, um, it's like an honor to be able to bring people information that can empower them like that. And so yeah. I, I yeah. mean, um, and then also should, if while they're waiting for their appointment, should they get the 23 and me? Um, exactly. Test? That's what I okay. tell people. Yeah. Reach out to me. And then while they're on the waiting list, they get the 23 and me done. And it usually works out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Anthony. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tara. Yeah. Great. Great to talk.